Welcome to H360 Health Talk. I want to welcome Doug back. We're going to continue our discussion on the importance of keeping in mind summer safety tips. Well, Doug, it's good to see you again. Thank you, Dave. Now, Doug, st sticking with the theme of food safety, barbecues are, are getting fired up. We're grilling out more. Um, it's so important to keep your food covered, keep your food refrigerated until you're ready to put it on the grill. I see so many people going out to the park and they set up their barbecue and you look over and there's their hamburgers or their hot dogs sitting out on the picnic table in the blazing sun and it just sits there until they're ready to put it on the grill. Bacteria. Yeah, meanwhile there's you know, flies and all kinds of, you know, insects flying all over, touching it, landing on it. You yeah. know, th that just can't be good for you. It, it, cannot, it cannot be good for <laughs> it you. It doesn't sound very appetizing either. It, 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 <laughs> it does not. And, you know, uh, the, the other thing is, you know, you always want to wash your hands. I, you know, when, when we go to the park or we go for a cookout, I'm always quick to take a gallon of water with me just for the purposes of washing my hands. Or... Mm -hmm. You know, some of that hand sanitizer now, you can just squirt it on. You read the label, it says it eliminates 99.9% .9 of the germs and bacteria. That's a very, very quick way of keeping your hands clean, especially if you're out having a good day. It's a picnic. You might be playing softball or tossing a Frisbee around or horseshoes. You know, your hands are going to get dirty. You, you don't want to transfer those germs over into your food. Absolutely. I mean, you're touching... Yeah, you know, you're out of a public place like that, you know, you're touching, you know, you mentioned horseshoes, you're at a playground, you know, they're all over the place. There's bugs everywhere, germs everywhere, definitely very important. Yeah. So moving right along, Doug, you know, drowning, summer months, ponds, swimming, even, believe it or not, you know, swimming pools where there are supposed to be lifeguards on duty. Yep. Um, about almost 850 children under the age of 14 die a year wow. from drowning. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, I think supervision is probably the most important factor there. Um, you know, and it, I don't know if it's so much at like community pools or town pools or something like that, but you know, a lot of people have pools in their backyard. Um, a lot of times they don't, there's no fence around them. They're just there wide open. You know, a neighbor's kid could run from next door and just, you know, right in. You know, yeah. I think those those neighborhood pools are, are very dangerous because there's no lifeguard on duty. There's no crowd of people around to, to, to keep an eye out for stuff like that. Well, you know, the other two things. One, ponds. Mm -hmm. um, if you can't see the bottom, don't jump in. Right, you, you never want to jump into an environment where you can't see the bottom or where you haven't been there, where you don't know the depth, because some of the water is a little bit murky if you can't see the bottom. The next thing you know, you know, you see these kids jumping in and boy, so dangerous. Yeah, absolutely, and especially, like you said, it's brown, you know, you, you, it's not clear, you can't see to the bottom, so you, you don't know. Maybe there's a huge rock where you're about to jump in. You know, you don't know what you're getting into. Yeah, you, you never really know. And then a, a lot of us, you know, we, we live here in New Jersey. Um, there's the Jersey Shore, very popular summer destination. Um, even going out and, and wading out, and you get out so far, and then all of a sudden... You know, and the water might be waist deep for a long period of time as you're walking out, and then all of a sudden the tide might come in, or mm -hmm. you might experience a rip tide, and that tide will take you out further. And you, you hear about a lot of drownings happening that way. Yeah, you know, and, and here in New Jersey, the beaches are extremely crowded, you know. So while there may be a couple lifeguards there, they're, they're keeping an eye on thousands of people at one time. So, you know, if there's hundreds of people out there in the water, you know, the odds of them spotting someone who's struggling or maybe going under it's very difficult for them yeah and you know drowning is one of these things that can be silent you know i mean you go you, you see somebody go under all of a sudden they're intaking water it's and their their feet are moving um, you know a lot trying to get above water trying to get air yeah they're running out of breath so they don't have the capacity to yell for help or scream or you know wave their arms in the air you know yeah so you really have to pay attention to that so i think with you know with a, with that you know i think it's important don't don't go out there alone 
You know, make sure you're yeah. with somebody. Make sure you're either with a group of people or at least you have one other person there with you. And stay together when you're going out there in the water. You know, keep an eye on each other. At least one person could yell for help if your friend is going under. The buddy, buddy system. Absolutely. Right? Almost like scuba diving. You should yeah. never scuba dive alone. Always have a buddy going, you know, and scuba diving with you. Um, no, all, all excellent points. Now... Um, I know a lot of people aren't going to want to hear this, trampoline danger in the summertime. Doug, it's that's unbelievable. A, that's an interesting one. Over 90,000 emergency room visits in really? 2001. Now, it's a little dated. I think there's uh, some laws or some regulation now about, you know, you, the more trampolines I see have the netting around them. Mm -hmm. But I still, it's unbelievable, I still see a lot of trampolines with no nets. And I got to believe it, if, if these kids today are anything like I was when I was a kid, boy, that is a kid magnet if you ever saw one. You kids run out there, there's no net, they're jumping high. Who can get the highest? Who can do the best flips? And the next thing you know, you got a situation on your hands where you're in the emergency room. Yeah, that's surprising. I've never heard that statistic before. Or frankly, I've never really heard people mention, you know, trampoline accidents that much. Um, so that's interesting that you bring that up. You know, I always think, you know, the little bit I was on them when I was a kid, you know, they weren't as popular back then. But, um, you know, you always thought they had the protective padding around the, you know. Um, when mm. I was a kid, we never really had those, the, the net or, you know, right? those systems that go around them. So, um, you know, that's interesting to hear. I've never really heard that mentioned before. Yeah. Now, you know, the purpose of today's show is not to be a Debbie Downer on summer. I mean, summer, summer can be great <clears throat> fun. We just want to highlight... Some of the things yeah. that you want to pay strict attention to. Mm -hmm. um, and, and one of them is yard work. You know, the grass is going to be growing. The, tree, the trees and the shrubs are need, going to need to be trimmed, cut back. It's just like, you know, they say about snow shoveling in the wintertime. Um, when you're not in the greatest of shape and you get out there and you start shoveling heavy snow, mm -hmm. the chances for stroke and heart attack I think exponentially increase. And I think it's the same way with yard work. Yeah, you know, when you're doing that excessive labor outside and it's very hot out and, you know, especially when it gets humid out, like where we live up here, it gets very humid. Um, so I think, you know, one of the important things to think about with the heat and the sun, you know, in the summertime is try to avoid, you know, between 10 o'clock and 4 o'clock. You know, if you're going to go outside and do uh, some of that yard work, do, yeah. it, do it at 6 o'clock in the evening, you know, when it starts to cool down a little bit. Or do it early in the morning before the sun really gets up and it's real hot, you know. I know my wife and I like to go for a couple mile walk every day. So when we get into those warmer months in the summer, we usually try to do it after dinner at like 8 o'clock. You know, it's still light out till 8.30, 9 o'clock. Um, so we try to wait till it cools down a little bit, you know, because we're bringing our dog with us. You know, the heat's not good for him either. So we try to time it around those those windows. Well, and you know what? Actually, and, and it's probably better for your waistline, right? Because if you have dinner, you let the temperature cool down a little bit. Instead of sitting on the couch and watching a show, you guys are getting up. You're taking a nice walk, getting out with the dog, getting some exercise, getting some more steps in on that Apple Watch or Fitbit or activity tracker if you're using one um, so I think all the way around it's it's a pretty good deal yeah so again back to what you're saying with the the labor outside you know if you are gonna do those things um, try to limit how long you're out there you know do, do it in spurts you know if you have a bunch of projects to do outside if you're planting flowers or cutting the grass or trimming the hedges you know do do a little bit maybe a half hour or an hour go inside for an hour or two, cool down, hydrate, and then, you know, maybe go back out for another shorter period of time to, to finish what you're doing. Now, Doug, have you ever gone and driven somewhere, pulled into a parking lot, and you look at the temperature on your car and it's registering in the high 80s or low 90s, and you get out of your car and you're walking into a store and you see a car that's not running and a dog is in the car or equally worse a child is in the car yeah so that's something um you know i don't see it as often anymore because i, I do feel like a good amount of awareness has been brought um, especially with the dogs you mentioned i think that's become a very um it's been a hot topic no pun intended sure. lately um you know you see where people now i think some states have made it 
where you can actually legally break someone's window open to save the dog. You know, you won't face any punishment for that, you know, for saving the dog's life. Yeah, well, I, I don't think there should be a punishment. No, if, absolutely if the punishment not. should be on anybody, it should be that person that locked that dog or that child in the car. And you know what? And, and you listen to these people. You, you hear about it on the news. And what's the first thing? Well, I was only going to run. I just needed to... It's always, half a gallon yep, of milk. yep, it's always a right. few minutes, yep. Right, I just needed to run in and <clears> grab <throat> something, didn't think I was going to be out there that, you know, in there that long, come out and, you know, the heat is, has taken its toll and it done its damage. Yeah, so what I'll do if, if I really have to do that, you know, if I'm out somewhere and I have the dog with me and I have to absolutely run in somewhere, um, luckily, you know, I have the remote start on my car, so I'll... I'll lock him in the car with the air on and I'll remote start it so the air conditioning turns on and it stays cool the whole time. And hopefully people, you know, if they walk by and see him in the car, they can see that the car is running and then he's cool and he's comfortable. Now, Doug, what should we look out for in terms of um, our, uh, our senior citizens or very on the other end of the spectrum, very young children? I know we hit on a lot of the topics about making sure dehydration. Um, but what about keeping a close eye on our neighbors? Yeah, I think that's very important. You know, you want to watch out for anything that's abnormal, you know. Um, you know, some obvious signs of heat stroke could be um, nausea, vomiting, uh, dizziness, you know. So if you, you know, sometimes they, people, when the heat gets to people, they have a hard time putting sentences together that, you know, they start to... Word you know, salad. Absolutely. So I think those are some of the signs you can you can look out for, you know, pay attention to, you know, everybody should be always be watching out for one another. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Doug, did, is there anything else that we need to talk about in this topic that we haven't hit? No, I think, you know, that's about everything, you know, um, try to stay in the air conditioning as much as you can, try to stay cool. Um, one thing people don't realize, um, you know, when they try to stay cool when they're inside is fans. You know, you say, oh, I don't want to turn the air on because I don't want to run up the electricity bill. I'll just turn the, the ceiling fan on. Um, but, but a ceiling fan really doesn't do much. It really just moves around hot air. So it's not cooling the air by any means. So, you know, while, while you may not want to spend that extra 20 bucks or so on your electricity bill that month, you really sometimes need to, to bite the bullet and do that. Yeah, really good point. Well, Doug, great discussion. A lot of great, important points. Um, for everybody to keep in mind. Um, so uh, from Dave and Doug and the entire Healthy O360 family, we wish you all a very happy and safe summer. Thank you for having me.